Welcome everybody. You got Larson Starr here, CEO of Gondola. And what I want to talk about here today is discovery call scripts. And specifically, you know, after working with hundreds of different businesses out there and looking through their discovery process to date and what they're trying to accomplish in terms of standardization, a lot of times it ends in some sort of discovery call script or structure around how we want the call to be going. And what I, what I think is really important is to not make it too scripted, but you need to have that standardization there. We don't want to sound like robots, but we want to make sure that we have some sort of consistency across the entire sales org. And so, you know, after working with a lot of different organizations, I have a few ideas on how you can go about shaping this up so you can achieve that level of standardization that you're looking for without sounding robotic or too scripted as if I'm reading directly off the script here. So um, we're going to keep this a little bit more in terms of the whole structure of the discovery process. But uh, yeah, let's walk through a few things here. Let me show you what uh, kind of some of the thoughts are. So when I think about writing a discovery call script or process here, I kind of broken it out into five kind of key concepts here. Um, so when you think about it, the first place you need to start is identifying these segments of your discovery calls. This can be generic. And this means, what are we doing for pre-call research? How am I gonna create a point of view and craft some power questions? You know, we're digging into current state and future state next. Those are the next area of focus. Then we want to focus a little bit more. It's our turn to speak about our products. So why us? How can we help them achieve this future state? And then the next kind of last key part is discussing next steps, follow-up questions, uh, and making sure we set up that follow-up meeting there. So this is kind of the general structure that's the first place to start in terms of creating some sort of standardization within that discovery call framework. And where I like to go from here is focusing on the opening and the closing, right? People remember the first things and the last things they heard. So what you need to be doing is, you know, what type of pre-call research are we doing to get us ready for these calls? Are you looking at news articles, LinkedIn, Crunchbase, all these different pieces here? And this helps me to kind of formulate an idea about what's going on in the company, what that person might be experiencing in their day-to-day -day job. Um, and this will allow me to craft some a unique point of view on their business, uh, but also craft some opening questions that can help me to really uh, kind of you know, start off the call on the right foot and establish myself as a subject matter expert and you know, engage in some pretty interesting dialogue here. And then of course, the ending piece of this, this is where momentum is carried or lost. And so we need to know where we're going and who we wanna meet with next at that organization to make sure we carry that momentum forward. The third piece I like to think about is tying current state, future state to use cases. And so you know, as you're digging into current state, you want to start off with some kind of very high level, you know, can be feeling a little bit generic, open-ended questions. Tell me a little bit more about what you're focused on for the second half of this year. And then you, where you go from there is you create kind of a variable roadmap of digging questions that ideally is connected to the value that you provide. So, okay, you're focused on, you know, you know, creating more predictable revenue and forecast. Okay, tell me a little bit more about why you're focused on that. How do you think you're going to achieve that today? So on and so forth. And so... What this does is it allows you to dig into the rule of threes. So why are you focused on this right now? What are you expecting to achieve from this? And then uh, what is so important? Uh, wh why is it so important for you to be solving at this particular moment? So these are really important pieces that help you get a deeper level, level of granularity into why is this important? Why are they focused on this right now? What do they expect to achieve? What happens if they don't do this? And so this gives you that deep lever, level of understanding in terms of current state and then also the future state they're trying to get to and the level of importance that this is. The fourth piece here is knowing your customer story. So when it comes to talking about our product or service, a lot of times we can get a little chatty or a little bit long-winded here. And so what I like to do is create parallels or you know um, between the use cases that we could dive into, current state, future state analysis, and then customer stories that might remind uh, you of those use cases. So, you know, providing that variable roadmap on, okay, if I have use case X, I need a customer story tied, tied to that. And then you have a transition statement that says, you know, who you really remind me of is this customer, you know, X, who is really struggling with a lot of the same issues. And, you know, what we provided to them was X, Y, and Z things. And they were able to solve all their problems and achieve the outcome that they wanted to. And so that last piece is really important. We need an outcome-based kind of value add here. They don't really care about your features. They don't care about the functions. They don't care about the founder story. They don't care about any of those things. They care about yourself and anybody else that's similar to me that was experiencing these same, same problems and how they were able to achieve it. And so that's kind of the fourth piece when it comes to standardizing this is knowing the customer stories and creating parallels between the use cases that we can uncover and those customer stories we want to dig into. 
And then the last piece here is the kind of standardizing that close. So you want to, as you transition from customer story into your closing motions, do a quick summary of what their business case was, meaning this is where you're at right now, this is where you wanna be, and this is where I think we can help out. And by doing that really quickly, again, people remember the first things and the last things that they were told, you're leaving them with some really good nuggets that they can go speak internally about uh, to some of their colleagues. You also wanna review your next steps and questions. Make sure you, you get a firm grounding on, okay, this is where we're going. These are the steps to get there. Are we in alignment on this? And make sure you don't, uh, there isn't any miscommunication that's happening on that front. And then last would be setting that concrete follow-up, calendar invite, sending it out, selecting a date and time that you wanna be meeting, even if it's just a placeholder. I certainly understand that people need to check schedules, but this can be a really effective way just to maintain that momentum and we're not scheduling it over email because trust me, it is so much easier to ignore an email than it is to decline an invite. So get that calendar invite out there and make sure you set those follow-up steps. So this is kind of what I see as a way to help to create a discovery call framework or a script, if you will. There are different categories of this. So these are the five key pieces that I look for when I'm working with any organization and some of the best practice that we've helped to establish. So I hope this is helpful and let us know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you so much.